Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. Martin. He smell it to recover the $130,000 it said it cost them to investigate his allegations of a hate crime. Chicago's mayor and police superintendent held multiple news conferences to express their outrage over lies they said smell it told. Okay, let's see how they respond to the lies told by Chicago police officers about an incident at Marshall High School school in Chicago. The officers filed a police report that said a student at the school kicked, bit, and spit on the officers, and that her actions led the two officers and the student to fall down a flight of stairs. In the arrest report, the officers said the student, 16-year-old Nigma Howard, quote, initiated a physical altercation with the officers. Yep, there is video. So let's see how the officer's stories hold up. There is no sound, but the pictures will tell the story all too well. So the officers are no longer working in the school. Charges against the girl were dropped. The family is suing. And there is body cam footage still to come. We'll keep you posted. So joining me on the panel here in our studio is communication strategist Kelly Bitha, CJ Jordan, CEO of the Jordan Management Group, Joseph Williams, senior editor of the U.S. News and World Report, and on Skype from Philadelphia, we have Teresa Lundy, founder of TML Communications. All right, so the New York Post, should we, I guess we take a second to talk about that. You know, I, you know when I look at that particular um, video footage and we see once again, time and time again, examples of police telling one story in police reports, but when evidence pops up, there's something completely different. It makes you wonder, with all of this righteous indignation that's going on with the Jesse Smollett case, when will Chicago sort of, sort of wake up to what really needs to be done in that police department to root out uh, the huge dysfunction and injustice that's become a part of the system in that city and beyond. What are your thoughts? I'm really speechless, you know, because this happened to a child. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about, you know, a grown man, a grown woman. We're talking about someone's baby. She's 16 years old. She was in a school setting. And from the looks of that video, it didn't look like there was any altercation between her and the officers at all before they threw her downstairs. And my issue with this is not only the over-policing of our black children in schools, but the the dissociation that these officers have when it comes to exactly who these children are. I'm sure that a lot of these officers have their own children or know people with children. They wouldn't want anybody treating their child like that or their niece or their nephew or their brother or sister. So what makes you think that you have the agency to do something like that just because you have a gun strapped to yourself? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's absurd. Absolutely. What are your thoughts? Well, I think that the more things change, the more they say the same, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they could probably sue Jesse Smollett, and the money that comes in from that lawsuit will go to pay out the parents of this young girl. And it's not anything that we haven't seen before, so I wish I could say I was shocked. I mean, certainly the pictures or the images are just breathtaking, but mm -hmm. I mean, we've been here before, and with as many school resource officers, cops, whatever you want to call them, in schools, this is one that happened to get caught on, on film. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know this sort of thing happens probably every day in at least, you know, a handful of schools around the country. Mm -hmm. This is one we see, yeah. right? And coming on the heels of the Jesse Smollett uh, uh, case, which in turn came on the heels of a lot of Chicago police officers, the Quan McDonald verdict, and uh, a situation in the Chicago police force a couple of years ago where it was discovered that they had secret torture sites mm -hmm. yeah. where they would drag victims to. It's not that surprising to me that Chicago cops would get uh, caught on camera doing something like this to a child. And it's also not surprising to me that we don't see any outrage from the mayor or from the chief of police beyond a rote statement. 
Absolutely. So, Teresa, I'd love to bring you in on this. You know, when you when we talk about this issue, as was mentioned previously, of these so-called resource officers in schools uh, that are literally abusing and attacking our children as part also of a sort of system of repression, of violence, uh, of just complete dysfunction in the Chicago Police Department, you know, what are parents to do when we are in situations where we're trusting our, ch our children to get a safe education and we find out that their attackers are actually the ones who are there supposedly to protect them? And that's putting uh, us actually in a really hard position, right? So parents, loved ones of those uh, that we entrust to educate um, the students uh, without putting excessive force seems like um, almost the norm for them um, to uh, not not make not, seems like the norm for everyday violence for African Americans, right? And so, and so I, I see this case as another incident that the police department, um, obviously, you know, with the Jesse Smollett co case wants to really undermine some of the uh, outer layers of, of what's actually going on in the department. And let's just be honest, this is going on in departments across uh, municipalities, across cities, across the country. So I think an overhaul review and an analysis of best practices um, and training of what's going on in the office would really start to, to, to change uh, the mindset of some of these officers if uh, city government actually uh, uh, takes charge um, and does something different. But see, Ava, I have to tell you, I mean, we've been here before so many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And training, Chicago police has been under consent decree. They've been out of a consent decree. Training has not been the issue. I it's mean, they can, train up do they can train up uh, police officers. And yeah, it's a good step. It's a first start. But it has to go beyond that. It is systemic. It keeps happening. It reminds me of the case that happened in North Carolina where the police officer came into the mm -hmm. classroom. Yeah. The only aberration here was that it was not a black boy. Yeah. It was a black girl. Yeah. And as we know that you know, black men or black boys are more often to be disciplined and more often to face that kind of punishment than any other uh, cohort in a school at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And it has to start somewhere. And it's got to be broader than just training. Well, what I think is interesting, though, if you look at what's going on with the Jesse Smollett situation, you know, to me, why not use that as a standard bearer? I mean, if you're saying that he needs to pay out a hundred and some plus thousand dollars because of the lost man hours with regards to his lie, uh, but the, the city itself has paid out over a hundred million dollars in lawsuits to families who have been victimized by police violence. And not one cop has paid a dime to reimburse the city for those millions of dollars. If they want to set a precedent with, with Jesse, shouldn't they also live by the same precedent under these circumstances? I think that's a very fair argument. I don't think it's necessarily going to happen because in the grand scheme of things, what it looks like is that it's almost cheaper to pay out uh, a settlement between, you know, the... Uh, between the plaintiff and Chicago police than it is to actually reform the entire department. Mm -hmm. And that's a sad thing to say, but that's what it's looking like. A hundred million dollars plus, you know, compared to the billions of dollars that you're having to invest in an entire police department and what the police would have to pay back, et cetera, et cetera. I think, you know, the cost benefit analysis of what you're saying isn't in favor of frankly, doing the right thing. Well, but see, here's, the, here's one thing that is in favor of doing the right thing, is insurance companies. These departments are insured, these cities are insured, and if the insurers come to them, as happened in one small town in California, cops beating people up, cops having sex with, with, with uh, detainees, mm -hmm. just really bad behavior top to bottom, and the, the, the city was paying out lump sum settlement after lump sum settlement. So the insurers came in and say, hey, we're going to cut your policy off unless you get a handle on this, mm -hmm. unless you fix your broken equipment, unless you get enhanced training, and unless you bring these officers to heal either by firing, termination, or some other kind of reprimand, we're going to cancel your policy. Yeah. Now, this was a small town and, and not the city of Chicago, which presumably has enough insurance to cover these losses for a while. I mean, clearly, the pattern has not changed at all. Right. So something has to happen to hit them in the pocketbook and that will force a chain of events 
that will get the officers under heel and will get the training that, that's needed to bring this down. I understand that I grossly underestimated. The city of Chicago has paid out over $700 million. And so what, what it seems like to me what we're seeing here is just the valuation of, of injuries, perceived injuries to whiteness uh, versus the degree to which injuries to blackness are completely ignored and devalued. The fact that they would be willing, even with these insurance payments that I'm sure they're having to pay, they would be willing to pay out $700 million and just say, okay, well, let's go on to the next one. Yet they want to hold Jesse's feet to the fire for $100,000 just to me shows how much they value protecting the myth of the pristineness of whiteness versus the reality of abuses against black, black and brown people. Absolutely. Well, it's not called a blue knife for nothing. Yeah, and, and, yes. and just to add a little tidbit, uh, but that's why you have more families and parents going into the charter school space mm. because, you know, most of the charter schools that has, has been popping up in Chicago are thinking about new leaf. They're not putting uh, security measures at the door, making it feel like um, it's prison when a, a student comes in and they have to be searched from head to toe. Wow. So I think, you know, looking at some of those alternatives, um, and especially as it relates to the trainings of um, uh, of what, what I was saying on the inside early on, uh, I think the trainings really just have to be really in-depth, a real in-depth analysis approach of what's going on in the police department and also understand that we need to maybe reform uh, some sort of local and state funding that they get funded every year to, to in order for that school to exist. Yeah, but yeah I just think people. I just fired. think heads need to roll. Exactly, yeah. heads mm -hmm. need to roll. Uh, people need to go Absolutely. to jail. People need to be fired. That's the, that's the, and, and or people need to pay back, reimburse the city in the same way that they're trying mm -hmm. to get Jesse to reimburse the city. That's what needs to happen. All right, folks, back to our my unfiltered video in just one Calling moment. all HBCU alums, students, and leaders. Enter the Ford Motor Company HBCU Mobility Challenge and win $25,000 for your school. That's a lot of that's a lot of dough. Come on, schools. Building on their long-term support of HBCUs, Ford is looking to improve mobility in HBCU communities through innovative solutions. The winning program will receive a grant of up to $25,000 to implement their proposal. The deadline to apply has been extended to April 15th, 2019. Go to fgb.life for more information and to apply. Ford goes further in our community. Now back to your Roland Martin unfiltered video.